Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Afrata Live, and it is time to check out our new standard format, and today we have a deck that I am incredibly high on. We have a deck that I think might be an actual legit threat to be a top tier archetype in standard, and that is Blue White Elish Norn Battle Tokens, and I think this deck is actually just absolutely ridiculous. So, I'm not going to talk about it a ton. You will see the absurdity of this deck in action, but the plan of the deck is pretty simple. We're trying to do one major thing, and then I guess sort of two things, but the plan of this deck, we are trying to flip Invasion of Segovia. Invasion of Segovia comes down for three mana. It makes two one one tokens, whatever. That's like not great, a little bit overcosted. However, the backside of Invasion of Segovia is a absurd magic card. In Cadis C Tyrant of Segovia, it's only a three three. It's a legendary serpent, but it says non-creature spells you control have convoke. And the beginning or end step, untap up to four target creatures. So Kydus is the reason that we built this deck and we're playing this deck and it is i would say one of the most powerful creatures in all of standard so you'll see how this works in the actual games but essentially we play this hopefully with the help of ambitious farmhands and spirited companions and wedding announcement tokens or whatever we flip it relatively quickly and then it becomes the most insane source of ramp that you can imagine because we have all these bodies on the battlefield from Invasion of Segovia, from Ambitious Farmhands and Spirited Companions and Wedding Announcements. So we have a lot of creatures to convoke. And if you look at our deck, it's full of non-creature spells. Uh, invasion of New Phyrexia, White Sun Swilight, Reckoner Bank Busters, Counter Spells, Removal Spells, Planeswalkers. So what normally happens is we flip Invasion of Segovia, we get Cadiz, we dump our hand of Reckoner Bank Busters and cast a huge Invasion a new Frexy if we have one, whatever we need to do. And then we go to our end step and we get to untap four creatures. And that lets us leave up, make disappears and protect the negotiators and wandering uppers to interact with our opponent. Cause we can cast these cards for free just by tapping our random tokens. So essentially this is how it feels. It feels like we play a good standard deck. And then once we flip Invasion of Segovia, all of a sudden, we're playing a legacy deck. Our deck is full of Force of Wills, essentially. Better Force of Wills. Our deck is full of Solitudes, free removal spells that are exiling our opponent's stuff. Uh, so all of a sudden, we go from a good standard deck into a legacy deck. The problem for our opponent is they're still playing a standard deck. And if you've ever seen a standard deck try to fight a legacy deck, it just doesn't work. So that is the power of Cadiz. Our secondary plan is Invasion of Phyrexia, which just synergizes really well with Invasion of Segovia. We make a bunch of knights. The knights can help attack and flip Invasion of Segovia. It gives us a ton of bodies that we can use to uh, attack down our battles or to use for Convoke once we get Cadiz. And it snowballs super duper hard. Like once we get Invasion of Segovia, flipped we can tap all of our creatures to cast a huge invasion new phyrexia and then using all the creatures we get from invasion new phyrexia maybe cast another invasion new phyrexia or do the counter spell tricks we were talking about so i'm gonna stop rambling about this deck but i actually think this deck this one i don't think is a meme like out of all the decks i've played so far an early access date for a new standard format some version of this deck and again like i don't know the exact like should you play more mondrax or elish norns this is the first build of this deck i've made so i'm sure there's some tuning you can do around the edges but i am pretty convinced that some version of this has potential to be one of the best decks in our new standard format so anyway everyone that is blue white elish norn battle tokens that's our deck for today let's jump into some games and just see this absurdity in action oh yeah quick reminder if you want to put together this deck you can snag the cards you need from our awesome sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtgoldfish anyway thanks for watching everyone enjoy the gameplay and i will be back in a bit for the wrap up all right new standard time we are playing some blue white battle tokens i guess uh <laughs> A deck I'm actually really hyped about. Out of like, so we play a lot of janky fun decks and do a lot of uh, a lot of crazy things. But this is a deck that I think yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think this might actually be a a real deck in standard. I think uh, the power of blue white tokens is actually pretty high. Wait, is our opponent also playing tokens? What is going on? Blue white blue white mirror match opponent. Yeah, okay, we would rather that not be a thing. Yeah, we're going to counter the shark and then run out our wedding announcement. Start making some tokens. Opponent. 
So the key card in this deck, well, there's really two. Well, there's one of them. Uh, one of the two key cards is Invasion of Segovia. The other key card is Invasion of New Phyrexia. Those are the cards that we really need to flip to do sweet, sweet things. Ooh, opponent also Invasion of Segovia. Respect. The opponent passes. Uh, well, we will play a land. Only one blue source is super awkward here. Yeah, I think we just pass. Pass and flip the wedding announcement. So in our perfect world, in our perfect world, we protect the negotiators with kicker here to counter something, and then cast one of our one of our battles and maybe flip it. Elish Norn. All right. Uh, yes. We will protect the negotiators. Wow, they didn't kick it. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, you probably should have kicked that one, I think. Perhaps wanted to kick it. Uh, well, we will Invasion New Phyrexia. And then attack Invasion New Phyrexia. Wow! I think our opponent has given up on life. Uh, Teferi. And then, yeah, I think we actually just draw... Discard Wandering Emperor, discard White Sun's Twilight. Ooh, who play the land. All right, opponent, show us that farewell. Show us that farewell. Chrome Host Seed Shark, uh-huh. Opponent passes. Well, we will Invasion of Segovia. All right, opponent remembers to sack this time. This is fine, we will decline. Invasion of Segovia, number two. Teferi, tick down. Get rid of that Chrome Host Seed Shark. Flip the battle. Hit our opponent. Wow, this is going well. The battle flips. The backside is the reason to play this deck. Now we get to start convoke. I mean, we're out of cards at the moment, but we get to start just convoking things out. And then we get to untap. The backside of Battle of Segovia is absolutely busted if you build around it. Like, Cadis is ridiculous. Opponent, Mondrak, sure. Very good Magic the Gathering card. However, I think you're just dead. Opponent, sure. Uh-huh. Passes. And we get the GGs. And we will... Yeah, I think we just Emblem to Fairy and Swing. Like, I don't even think we need to do anything here. Go to combat. Attack with everything. And make you die that might have went differently had our opponent remember to make disappear opponents they seem like they're trying to do something similar to us i am not a fan of chrome host seed shark i think that card is i'm sure there's ways you can build around it but i do not think it's a i don't think it's a very good card in general all right tokens take two well this hand looks wonderful and this is why i think that that can be real like if you think about standard one of the good decks in standard already is mono white that's playing like spirited companions ambitious farm hands wedding announcement our deck naturally gets to play all those cards plus it gets to harness the power of these new battles that are actually really 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 strong like the, the backside of battle of segovia i hope we get to see it like really go off it does absurd things like in a deck full of non-creature spells, being able to convoke your non-creature spells and then untap all your stuff is, it's ridiculous. It's like over the top, over the top powerful. It is one of the battles that I think is best for flipping, honestly. Um, well, let's just, yeah, play an island. Spirited Companion. No one ever counters the dog. <laughs> Even if they could, no one ever does. Opponent. Are we killing the dog? Ooh. All right, so opponent appears to be a proliferate control deck of some kind. Opponent, Shattered Shanktum, and Norn's Inquisitor. Oh, they're trying to proliferate on battles, spicy. Um, well, we are going to play the land. I think we just get down wedding announcement. Start attacking. Opponent, Shipwreck Marsh, uh-huh, and, all right, more inquisiting. Proliferate does work well with the Incubates. So this is going to be, what, a 3-3? Three, three? I mean, that's not bad, right? So four mana, you get a 1-1 one, one, and a 3-3. Three, three. Plus you get the 1-1 one, one right away for two mana. Oh, this is actually going to be a 4-4 four, because four, they have two Inquisitors. Wow, opponent. Getting frisky. Uh, all right, no blocks. Down to 16. 
Ooh, there's Invasion of Segovia. How do we flip it? How do we flip it? Well, okay, play Deserted Beach. Opponent has three cards in hand. They get to flip another one of these. So we can't flip it right away. You know what, I think we actually just have to pass this turn awkwardly. I think we need to pass, leave up Wandering Emperor and make disappear. If our opponent gets too greedy, if our opponent gets too greedy, we might be able to flip Invasion next turn. All right, we drop to 12. Opponent, what do you got? Tap land, and, well, okay, Wandering Emperor. See if you got a counter. Just All right, opponent's going to Shield Grid's Edict, so... Yeah, I'm not happy about this, but I think we just gotta snipe the incubate. Snipe the incubate. Untap. Oh, opponent's gonna transform, sure. I'll well, play the land. Play Invasion of Segovia. Pass the turn. Flip. I mean, hopefully we get to flip it next turn, right? Maybe. About it. Gonna go to combat. Elish Norn. Yeah, we're gonna. We are going to make that disappear. <laughs> we would prefer that not to happen. Opponent passes. So, one, two, three, four, five. All right, play the land. Big attack at the invasion. We got to make sure this flips. So this is going to be a pretty good turn. Opponent blocks. Because now we get to start. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, check this out. Check this turn out. Check this turn out. This is the power of Cadiz. So we cast Cadiz. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, Invasion of New Phyrexia, X6. And then, Invasion of New Phyrexia. Actually, you know what? Let's let's wait on that one. Let's just pass. Untap our team, because Cadus is busted. Uh, in case they have a Farewell or something. Next turn, we get to cast the biggest Invasion of New Phyrexia of all time, if we want to. Uh, all right, so opponent kills Cadus. Well, I guess we're going to have to kill you then. <laughs> we wanted to just convoke out some fun stuff, but opponent, if you insist on dying, I guess that's uh, that's your call, spirited companion. Draw a card. Oh, God, Mondrak. Go to combat. I guess we do have a Mondrak. <laughs> Forgot I added a Mondrak to this deck. I mean, we just win, right? There's, <laughs> We could flip and get it to fairy, but I think our other choice is win the game so i guess we gotta take that choice unfortunately <laughs> about it what do you got go for the throw sure i think we still just win <laughs> Woo, musterino all right uh yeah that is i mean we only had one turn with katus on the battlefield like that's the power of the card it flips and that even isn't even the best example, but it flips. You immediately get to convoke out something huge. And then, in theory, you untap and can use your creatures even if you're tapped out to cast a counter spell. The play pattern is super, super strong. Like, Invasion of Segovia is worth flipping. It is worth flipping. It is worth building a deck designed to flip it. The payoff is so high that it's worth it. Like, not all battles are like that. Some battles you try to flip some of the time, like... We talked about it a little bit on stream. Like, some battles, I would say, like, 75% of the time, you're just playing them as sorceries. Invasion of Segovia, you were playing it to flip. Like, that is the reason to play it. Oh, all right, Reckoner Bank Buster. Well, I'm a little scared about our opponent getting off to the Mana Dork start on the play. Like, they could start dropping some big things, won't it? Scrap Gorger. Well, play the land, and... Yeah, I guess we gotta just start countering stuff here i wish we had a land opponent passes hmm are we just passing and discarding that feels horrible uh well let's spirited companion see if we can draw land 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 aha okay deserted beach and we will yeah we're gonna leave up the counter the amount of mana our opponent has is frightening land for our opponent and passes well we draw three chrome coast Let's play a bank buster. Pass the turn. Oh, uh, but what are they ramping into? Opponent <laughs> thinks about attacking. All right, draw with bank buster. Why is our opponent not doing anything when they have five mana? I'm so confused. Well, I mean, I guess if our opponent's not going to do anything, our not doing anything is better than they're not doing anything because our not doing anything is us activating bank buster. 
Opponent, pump fakes. Well, we will draw with Bank Buster. And leaving up Protect the Negotiators. Well, play the land. Play Elish Norn. And... Yeah, now I guess we start attacking. Oh, wait, this doesn't work because they have zero power. <laughs> okay. Yeah, attacking doesn't actually do anything. Just kidding. <laughs> Opponent. Sure, kills the Elish Norn. I mean, we're kind of fine with Elishorn being killed. We got another one in hand. A bonus. Untaps. Land. Liliana. Um, yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. You can have a Liliana. That's fine. Going to take down the Liliana. Uh, alright. Well, we lose a dog. A bonus. Passes. Well, okay. Bank Buster. Ultimate. Go for the throw with the token. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we will play the land. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Well, let's... Invasion of New Phyrexia. X5. Make a few friends. Crew. And... Yeah, let's attack the invasion. I don't think we care about Liliana at this point. Down to two. We're getting close. Also worth mentioning, this is like an absurd Protect the Negotiators deck. A tally. Yeah, I, I think we would prefer not to get a tallied here. Um, yeah, let's, let's make that disappear. And opponent. <laughs> Scoops it up. Yeah, all right, sure. Sounds pretty good. Fine. At least it's fine. Hello, opponent. Good game, opponent. <laughs> uh, deserted beach. Go. Opponent. Plays a land. Well, we will do some ambitious farming. Grab a planes. Pass the turn. Island for our opponent. Passes. Well, um, play a planes. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Wedding announcement. Wow, no counter. Okay. Okay, okay. There's value to getting winning announcement down first because we really value it flipping in this deck. Well, play the land, go to combat, get in with one. Yeah, we're going to be greedy. Invasion of Segovia. <laughs> they stifled it. All right, opponent stifled the activation. What? Counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If it's countered, exile it or stifle an activated ability. Well, play the land. Go to combat. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just send everything at it now. Are they playing that to keep battles from flipping? Is that the idea? Are they trying to stifle the flip? Cool. Two counters. Okay. Well, next turn we get to flip it. And flipping it's very good. We're also, like, not that far away from Elish Norning if we want to. Chrome host Seed Shark. You know what? You can have that opponent. You can have it for now. Well, we're going to play a land. We're going to go to combat. Send two at the invasion. Kill the shark. Flip it. And now this is where the good things happen. Um, Yeah, we'll just pass. We'll pass for now. Untap our dorks. So now we have access to our counters for free because Cadis is ridiculous about it c double make a token copy one two three four do we even yeah all right whatever sure you can have a token copy opponent that's fine we'll be we'll be friends <laughs> let's be friends invasion of segovia one two three make some tokens play the land hit you with cadis we don't want to flip because the backside is legendary Found it. Down to 18. Uh, Elish Norn. Untap. Your go opponent. So now we only have one mana available, but we can cast and kick all of our counters. Like, that is... Do we even care about this? Yeah, I mean, I guess we should counter it. It is free, after all. One, two, three. Basically, like, having force of will, a better force of will, legal and standard. That is, that is Cadis. <laughs> it is absurd. It is absurd. Yes, it is nice. Like, it, it is, it is busted. About it. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're done, but okay. 
Uh, we draw planes. Play the planes. Is our opponent literally dead here? Go to combat. Everything in our opponent. They might just be dead before we even flip Elish Norn. Four, I think they are. Wow. We're building Force of Wills in standard. Like, Cadus is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't know if older formats can make it work or not, but I think Cadus is one of the most powerful creatures in standard. Like, I really think, like, she old reds, uh, I don't know, Elish Norns, what else? Some Atroxas. Cadus is on that level. It might not look like it. It might not look like it, but wow, is it a ridiculous creature. I, I, and I'm at a loss for words at how strong that card is. <laughs> I am at a loss for words. I think it's probably the strongest backside creature, at least, out of all the battles. A opponent doing some mulliganing. Well, let's see if we keep the good times. Good times rolling. Uh, deserted beach, go. Opponent. Dark Slick Shores. Sure. Sand's kind of slow. Not the not the fastest hand. Schwamp for our opponent. In passes. Well, I like protect the negotiators. So I think our goal for this game is... I think we actually have to counter this hilariously. The first poison counter is the big one against a blue-black proliferate deck. It's worth fighting to keep the first one off the battlefield. The second one, that one doesn't really matter. Well, soldier beats. Hit ya. Down to 16, pass the turn. Do we have another one? Because all the, yeah, like this, like experimental augury doesn't do anything if you don't have a poison guy. Like it's still a anticipate, which is fine, but like the proliferate doesn't do anything unless you get in that first poison counter. So I, I'm a big fan of trying to stop the first, the first poison counter about it. Passing, well, how about a wandering emperor? All right, opponent going to counter it, sure. Well, we draw land, hit you with the 1-1. One, one. Oh, opponent. Oh, opponent. I have bad news for your opponent. Uh, we're gonna make some knights. Invasion of New Phyrexia. Let's see if we can flip it. If we can flip the Deferi, that would be super nice. Opponent. Mercurial Spell Dancer. Well, um, Ambitious Farmhand. Do a little, of, little bit of Ambitious Farming. Grab a Plains. Play the planes, go to combat, everything at the battle. Do we get a Teferi? All right, opponent's gonna trade, that's fine. We could have run out Wandering Emperor and pumped and flipped, but I think we can wait one more turn. I think leaving up the make disappear in case their opponent has a Wrath is probably worth it. This could be the Invasion of Fiora turn. Drowned in Ikor, sure. I mean, Teferi's still coming though. Uh, Wandering Emperor, you got another counter? Looks like no. All right. Uh, to fairy time. Go to combat. Two with the invasion. The rest at our opponent. Uh, yes. Flip it. To fairy. Uh huh. Or are they gonna try to counter this? Yeah. Good thing we countered that first poison counter. <laughs> we can just pay. And uh, yeah, let's draw some cards. Discard a Mondrak, play a Plains, tick up a Wandering Emperor, pass the turn. About it. Island, uh-huh. Well, let's transform. I mean, I think this one's just over. Oh my god, another invasion. That is pretty good. Well, let's uh tick up on Season Cathar. Go to combat, hit ya. Opponent. Down to six. Draw with Teferi. Discard Fateful Absence. White Sun's Twilight. Play the land. Play the wedding announcement. Yeah, I think we're going to hold on to this invasion of New Phyrexia. The one way we could lose, potentially, would be a Wrath. Yeah, you can Tezzeret. That's fine. So I think holding on to a way to rebuild after a Wrath is probably, probably correct. Even though it's tempting just to, like, make a ton more... Make a ton more tokens, opponent discards, discards. Draws a couple cards and dies. <laughs> wow, that wasn't even, that wasn't even especially close. Combat, face, game. <laughs> I'm telling ya. Invasion of New Phyrexia, Invasion of Segovia. These cards are really good. Really, really good. Hey, Cece, come here. 
Here's a here's a cat. Here's the the infamous couch cat. Can you meow into the mic? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? The infamous the infamous couch cat. I don't know if you if you don't follow this. Oh cat. Oh my god cat. All right. If you if you don't follow the stream, you might not know the story of the couch cat. The so this was like a month ago now, maybe two months ago now. Um, yeah, we'll try this. Um, so it was a month or two ago now, and. <laughs> Uh, I noticed for a couple days, so the, the way my office is, down the hallway is kind of like the living room area. So so Bear will, uh, uh, Bear the, the dog, he'll lay kind of like looking down the hallway next to me in the office. Well, that was a freebie. And he would, uh, actually, no. Um, and he would randomly like kind of like growl for no reason. And I would like look and I wouldn't see anything. I was like, I oh, must just be, I don't know, being weird, whatever. So, so this happened for like two or three days. And I was like, well, that's, that is kind of strange. Bear doesn't usually growl at things. So after, after two or three days of that, I woke up one morning and my living room smelled like, like cat, <laughs> cat urine and cat poop. And I was like, wow, something is going on. Like, why does my house smell like this? So I started to investigate and I found out uh, there was there was a couch that uh, a cat that was living in my couch. It had apparently snuck in. My best guess is through the dog door and just made a little home, like literally inside the couch, like inside the bottom of the couch, and had been living there. So so I figured this was going to be like a very a very feral cat. I live out in the middle of nowhere, so. This is a place where there's a lot of just like barn cats and people sadly like drop off cats they don't want on the back roads and try to leave them to fend for themselves or whatever. So I figured it was some sort of feral cat that had was looking for a warm place to sleep on a on a winter night. So I was expecting to get like brutally attacked trying to get this cat out of my house. But then I actually got the cat out of the couch with some help and uh <laughs> And it was like the nicest cat. It was like just super friendly and it would sit on your lap and it didn't try to claw my eyes out. So it actually like it, it did everything that I would have would have wanted out of a cat. So I decided, I guess I guess I ended up keeping it and uh, I didn't know what to name it and eventually decided on uh, on CC for for Couch Cat. So that is the very long and I guess not that interesting story of how I ended up with a cat. I don't even really like, oh, that sounds bad. I was going to say I don't even really like cats, but it is kind of true that I've never really been a cat person. So I never would have, I never would have tried to get a cat for myself. Like getting a cat for myself was not, not part of my plans or agenda, but this cat, I feel like kind of chose me. So now it deserves to stay. Like it put so much effort into sneaking in the house, avoiding a 160 pound Rottweiler to to stealthily live in my couch that like seriously if you're gonna put that much effort into it i can i can respect that i can respect that <laughs> anyway this game opponent tried to invasion of segovia unfortunately for them we had protect the negotiators and now we have an invasion of segovia which is hopefully flipping this turn oh golly gee uh well we'll go to combat everything at the invasion mm-hmm mm-hmm I mean, this is probably game. Like, this flipping. Wow, they're going to block. Okay. Opponent blocks, blocks. I mean, I guess if they can kill one of these one ones, it doesn't flip. Wow. Okay. So it flips. We get Cadus. Invasion of Fraxia. Sadly, only X3 this turn, but running out makes some knights. Use the knights to cast a Reckoner Bankbuster for free. End of turn. Untap all of our stuff. So we actually still have access to double fateful absence. <laughs> Seriously, Cadus is busted. <laughs> like, I don't even know if I'm being hyperbolic about this one. Like, this card is ridiculous. About it, Ujano. I know it's early access day. I know it's early access day. You can't read too much in early access day stuff, but I think it might be legit. Opponent going to pass. Uh, well, let's see if we can get it to fairy. So we'll go to combat. Everything at the invasion. Aw, opponent. All right, well, we're gonna lose our Cadis, unfortunately. But we're gonna get it to Fairy, so I guess that's uh, not the worst trade ever. All right, so flip Invasion New Phyrexia, get the Teferi. Start drawing cards, see if we can find another Invasion of Segovia. Discard a Spirited Companion, play a Spirited Companion. 
Ooh, protecting the negotiators is nice. I mean, even with our opponent having this wandering up, I just, I don't think it matters. Like, I don't think any of this matters. Opponent was on the play too, weren't they? Wow, we were just, they're getting stomped. Opponent, land. And, what are you gonna do? Yeah, make a 2-2. Might as well. Might as well. Opponent, passing. Well, we'll draw a card. More counters. Uh, take up to fairy. Discard a land. Discard, I guess, a fateful absence at this point. Play deserted beach. Do some attacking. Get in with the knights. Um, huh. Two cards. Yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, they can wandering emperor and tick up to let one of their knights live, but I don't think we actually care about this. Oh, they're going to tick down. Okay, that's fine. Also nice that the knights have... Vigilant, so you can't just snipe them with Wandering Emperor. All right, so trade off, play a wedding announcement, and pass the turn, draw a card. Oh, I really just want one more invasion of Segovia. Opponent hasn't managed to deal a single damage to theirs, which is not great for them. Opponent makes a samurai and rabble rousing. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think we care about that. <laughs> I don't think we care about any of this. Rabble Rousing is really good, but you need a board full of creatures for it to be good. And our opponent just is not at that point. Uh, so we will draw with Bank Buster. Untap. Uh, so to Fairy, I think we negative three. Get rid of the token. Go to combat. Kill Wandering Emperor. Hit our opponent. I mean, with no, no creatures on the battlefield... Rabble Rousing doesn't do anything at all. So hit our opponent. Spirited Companion draw a guard. Play a land. Pass the turn. Two counters at the ready. Opponent. Land. And passing. Oh yeah, this is this is not good for our opponent. Reckon or Bank Buster. Draw a card. Untap. Wandering Emperor. We only have one knight. And opponent, yeah, GG's. GG's. Uh, we will discard two lands. Oh, this is super over now. Go to combat. Hit you with everything. Play an Elish Norn. Add that to the party. Play a land. And yeah, I mean, let's... this. I don't even think this is correct, but it is fun. Uh, sack, sack, sack. Flip. Do a little incubating. And pass the turn. And draw a card. And discard a White Sun's Twilight, and... I don't know, farewell us, I guess, opponent. Farewell us or die. We're gonna get in a ton of damage, too, because of the Selish Norn. Double strike him. Combat. Kill ya. This might be the best Elish Norn deck, too, for new Elish Norn. This is, like, it's pretty easy to flip the Elish Norn in this deck. I mean, so I'm telling ya, like... I mean, we're... I'm rambling on about... Cats moving into my couch. Rambling on about cats moving into my couch. And uh, we haven't lost with this deck. Again, like, ah, since it's early access day, going undefeated, just, it's it's not that meaningful. But I think, like, from a broad scope view, I think it still means a little bit. Like, going 7-0 and with a deck, that deck's probably better than if you go 0-7 with a deck. Uh, going three and four with a deck or four and three with a deck or five and two versus two and five like that's when it gets a little muddy like because people are just doing brews and playing weird things and all that kind of stuff so uh, that's where it gets a little muddy but the deck still has just felt really good i think that's maybe the the most important thing to look for too is just like how does the deck feel do, like do the cards feel good is the deck functioning and i think this one definitely Definitely hits the mark as far as that's concerned. This hand is only okay. I like the counters, but we don't have any... Um, Yeah, we're just going to counter that, I think. I don't know. Probably doing something scary. Well, uh, play a land. Ambitious Farman. Grab a planes. The more manas we get, the better this invasion is going to be. Opponent, land, and Fable the Mirror Breaker. Ooh, Invasion of Mercedia discards a invasion of Innistrad. Oh, so this is a full-on, full-on battle deck, spicy. Uh, well, go to combat. Hit you with the farm hand. Play a spirited companion. Draw a card. And pass the turn. 
We would like to keep hitting lands. Opponent, Invasion of Ragatha. So this flips into what? Oh, sure, that, yeah. I don't think we want to spend a counter on that. They do get to kill one of our creatures, though, which is a little awkward. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. So our opponent gets a 3-3. Three, three. They can pay three, discard a card to make two one ones, pump and give haste. Yeah, okay, that's not the, that's not a land. Opponent. Dang it. Going to combat. Invasion of Urgamon. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. Donut loots, makes treasure. And invasion of Ixalan. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think we're going to let all this go, unfortunately. So it's a lot like our Jun Battles deck that was really funny and meme although had had some issues as well. Uh, all right. Wandering Emperor. Make it 2-2. Two, two. Play a Mondrak. Make two two twos. Pass the turn. Yeah, I wish we were hitting lands. We might actually lose this one. We might actually lose to the power of the battles since we have just not been able to not been able to draw lands. Opponent. Spirited Companion flips into the belligerent regis are. An invasion of Dark here. Uh huh. But our opponent's about out of cards. Kills the Wandering Emperor. Land. Land. We need land. Okay. Apparently, we will never draw lands. Um. Hmm. What do we do now is the question. Can we flip Segovia? Probably. Yeah, we're going to go for it. Segovia. Double the tokens. Everything at Segovia. We really want this flip. Opponent blocks. Opponent blocks. Sure. Mondrak dies. However, we get to flip, which is all we wanted. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, Invasion of Phyrexia F6 with one mana available. One. It's absurd. And then we get to untap, and now we have multiple counters at the ready. This is this is what I've been trying to tell you about. This is what I've been trying to tell you about. These play patterns, it's it's so good. Like now we can't lose. Now we have two force of negations, two force of wills, two whatever, name a free counter spell that also makes tokens. Like we have we have it all. We have it all. Invasion Zendikar. Sure. Yeah. Get some lands. That is fine. We do not care. We do not care even a little. Opponent. Invasion of Asglow. Well, I mean, I guess we might as well counter this because we're not doing anything else. Uh, all right, how about a little, how about a little force of will action here? Uh, tap, 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 and then you know what? I guess yeah, yeah. You know, let's how about a little, how about a little uh, solitude action here? <laughs> ridiculous! This deck's ridiculous. Uh, attack you and kill you. I'm telling ya! I'm telling ya! I don't even think I'm exaggerating. It's just absurd. It is like, oh, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It just feels so good. It feels like once you flip Invasion of Segovia, all of a sudden your deck goes from like a good standard deck to playing like a legacy deck against standard decks. <laughs> that is the power of flipping an Invasion of Segovia. That really, really is. You go from like, oh, I guess this, this is cool, this is fine, into like, oh, wow, I, I have a bunch of force of wills now. <laughs> My hand is full of solitudes. What is going on? I don't even know if we want to keep this. This hand's so defensive. I mean, I guess we're going to, yeah, you know what? We'll keep it. That's fine. It is a very defensive hand, and we don't have any of our battles, which is awkward. Hello, opponent. Hello. I mean, we gotta lose at least one, right? I think I think we just keep playing until we until we lose, or until oh, there's Battle of Segovia. I think we play until we lose, or until we uh, run out of time, because early access day is is going to be ending soon. So I think we just keep going until someone someone stops us. Um, yeah, that's kind of scary. Yeah, let's let's make that disappear. Opponent gets in for one. Well, play a land. Yeah, let's run out the invasion. Pass the turn. 
Can we flip it? Opponent, bloated contaminator. Well, play the land. Kill the contaminator. Attack the invasion. And, hmm, yeah, I think we pass. I think we gotta leave up this protect the negotiators. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. Opponent. This can turn into a 3-3, which is a bit of an issue. Opponent. Draws a card. Wow, did they not hit a land? Oh, no. Yeah, now this... <laughs> You're not incorrect, opponent. I think the game is probably over now. <laughs> Now that we get to flip this invasion with you missing land drops, uh, hard to imagine, hard to imagine anyone coming back from this. Well, the only good news for our opponent is our hand is not doing anything. <laughs> we have no payoffs. We have all the mana. We need one, like, invasion of Phyraxia. We've just drawn a ton of lands. Drawn a ton of lands. About it. Icker, yeah, you know, <laughs> yes, you can, you can drink some Icker. That's fine. <laughs> we are we are not going to counter that. Yeah, we need like one one more draw, one more good draw. Opponent does probably have some removal. Grafted butcher. Yeah, that's also fine. Sure. Menaces. Gross. Passes. Ugh. All right. All right. Let's let's chill with the only drawing of lands deck. How about how about that? How about how about not just only giving us lands forever? Oh, opponent. This game might not actually be over. Because you know our opponent's been missing land drops, so these are five pieces of action. Our hand is five pieces of nothingness. I mean, the bad news for our opponent is we're, like, one draw away from going off. Uh, all right, yeah, well, you do have to counter this, unfortunately. Counter it, make a token. Come on, deck. Show us that invasion of New Phyrexia. Goes attacking, down to 14. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we have learned... No matter how busted our deck is, there is one thing that can beat us, and that is the world's greatest flood. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've drawn ten lands out of fifteen cards. Yeah, not a not a whole lot else to say. We are really running out of time. We need to draw something this turn. Oh my god. Okay, that does change things. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Okay, this this does improve things. Invasion of Phyrexia X eleven. Untap. Alright, alright. That was that was good. That was good. I don't know if it's good enough with this Glissa down, but that was very good. Now we do have eleven tutus. Glissa's pretty strong though in a board full of Phyrexians. It might just be too late. Might just be too late for the invasion of Frexy to actually save us here. But I mean, even that, like, wow, so many tokens. Opponent's going to kill a 2 2. So our opponent's like going for lethal, I guess. Transforms. Yeah, well, those are some big ones. Swings with everything. So block here. Block here. Why is our opponent saying good game? Am I missing something? Block here. Block here block here i mean i guess our opponent has some sort of trick that i'm not seeing all right so do a bunch of blocking stuff dies opponent makes an incubate oh we draw a Giano. well okay one two three four five and I guess, yeah, I guess everything just goes at the invasion. Opponent flips, but it's only a 2-2. Sure. All right, we get a Teferi. We draw some cards. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Oh, this is actually going to work, I think. This, wow. The comeback. Okay, wait. Maybe we even do beat drawing all lands. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we can White Sun's Twilight for 12? And, uh, your go. <laughs> Back up to 22. <laughs> We went from almost dead to poisoning our opponent out of the game.
We drew only lands that game. We drew only lands, and we still won. <laughs> Even the magic gods can't defeat us. <laughs> oh, I thought that was I thought that was the end for sure. I thought that was the end for sure. I thought that the magic gods were gonna were were uh, just beat us with the flood. But well, I mean, I'm telling you, I am telling you. Uh, this is the deck I'm highest on as far as competitive play. If you're looking for something for Tuesday to actually play and try to like rank up with some sort of uh white blue tokens I think this is the deck that I'm I'm most hyped for so uh invasion like uh, the deck it's just really good you get to play a lot of the good white cards that are already really good in standard invasion of Segovia it is the truth like we see this like I said a minute ago it turns your standard deck into a legacy deck it turns your standard deck into a deck full of force of wills in free removal spells in solitudes it is really 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 bonkers and it interacts really well with innovation in new phyrexia because we can convoke it out and we just like dump our hand the turn that we flip this and then we still get to leave up the counters and it just feels unbeatable so I'm sure there's like work this is the very first build of the deck I haven't done really any tu tuning or anything. How many Ellis Shorns do you want? Is Mondrak better? Uh, questions like that need to be answered. But I think that this shell is actually incredibly, incredibly powerful. And I think Invasion of Segovia, it, because of that backside, is one of the strongest battles for Standard. And I actually think that we're going to see a deck like this potentially develop into a real threat in Standard. It just, it does everything you want. You got bodies to beat Invoke Despair. You got tons of blockers. You get absurd counter spells. So... I don't know. I think this deck might actually have a real shot to compete. But anyway, that is Blue White Elish Dorn Battle Tokens for our new standard format. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.